Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you through on how to get the Google Play Store for BlackBerry 10. This is perhaps the most well-known and easiest way to get Google applications on your device while running a patched version of Google services or Google Play services, which is required to run a lot of the core Google apps. And I have done a video about this a year earlier, but uh, since then there has been some changes and of course a lot of questions have been asked of, of me on issues that people had on getting things installed so I figured I'll walk you through on how to do this on your BlackBerry 10 device something a lot more modern but before we can get to this I want to address something that some people have also asked in case they were not made aware of and that is what is called the Android runtime analysis and the specific one I'm talking about is the Android runtime on BlackBerry 10 OS 3.2.2876. It's not just limited to this one I have seen, but uh, definitely check your BlackBerry. Uh, go to settings and about us and I'll show you how to get to that. Because the first thing we're gonna do, if you are running this version of, of your BlackBerry 10, this Android runtime most likely will not let you uninstall Android applications. So if you download an app or try to uh, delete an existing app because you no longer want it, you cannot get rid of it because there's there's a bug in this runtime um, on this software. And this page on Crackberry forums goes well deep into this issue and that no matter what you try you're not going to be able to fix it. Now if you want to find out if your Android runtime has issues I'm leaving a link to this page on the description below because there is a app right here that can verify whether or not your Android runtime does have issues with installing or uninstalling applications. Uh, most notably, some people have an issue uninstalling and they have had to gone as far as master resetting their BlackBerry 10 device and that is just a pain, just so they can get rid of applications they don't want. So how do we deal with this? Uh, well, BlackBerry did address this. They found that there was an issue with the Android runtime and they did proceed to patch it and they released the Android runtime update via BlackBerry App World. So you might not be able to find it directly by typing it in on BlackBerry App World. So I'm gonna leave a link to this also in the video description below so you know where to go. And I'm actually gonna link it to this page on CrackBerry because right here are the instructions. You have to follow them very carefully because you are gonna download it through your BlackBerry 10 device but you gotta be careful on how your browser settings are. For example, you must not be in desktop mode. Otherwise, if you go to the link, it's not gonna pull up the URL that leads to this update. And I'm gonna show you how that um, applies here in a moment. And once you download this application, it's I think it's over 100 megabytes large. So if you're on a limited data um, allowance, then this is one where you have to take into consideration using Wi-Fi. At any rate, after you download, you have to restart your phone and hopefully after that, you are you are done, you're fine, and you have a patched version or the updated less buggy version of BlackBerry Runtime for Android. And once you have that, then we could talk about getting this. Play Store 10 from Cobalt installed on your BlackBerry 10 device. So this is the Google Play Store and you can download to your heart's content um, some people do have issues in trying to get purchases downloaded. Well, they can download the purchases, but they cannot restore them uh, because there's some issues with the patch version of the Google Play Store. So just giving you a heads up, if you purchase the game or two, you might have some issues there. Now, I will go into the core apps that you need. Cobalt does have a list of applications. He has at least four that uh, you definitely need to get the Play Store up and running. And I'm gonna leave a link, of course, to this in the description below. Um, but the main gist of everything that you need are 
you need a Google account. If you don't already have one, make one because you're gonna to have to register it with your device and then you can proceed to install in the Google Play Store. So you're gonna have three applications that you have to have on your device. Again, I'm gonna walk you through here in a moment. And there are download links here on Cobalt's page. Um, he does put them on Mega. So from here on the Crackberry forums, there will be a link. Let's get to the link. So the download links will be for the Google Play services, the Google account manager, the BlackBerry Google ID, and ultimately the APK for the Google Play Store, which is the patch version. And those would be found on a mega link. And this is where you're gonna need to perhaps use your computer because he doesn't put them exactly in a zip file. You can download all these apps as a zip file, but I found it a heck of a lot easier to just either put them in a cloud a folder, which I can easily copy through the file manager on my BlackBerry to my BlackBerry, or just download them to your computer and transfer these files over to your SD card on your BlackBerry 10. So I've already gone ahead and done that, and let's, Let's go proceed to the BlackBerry so you can see just how to get these things up and running on your phone and you'll just see how easy it is. By the way, if you have two-step verification on your Google account, it's going to be a little trickier to do this. So just bear that in mind because you'll need a Google authentication to generate a password that you can use to log into your Google account on this. If that's too complicated and you're not familiar with two-step verification, well, you know what that means? You don't have to worry about it because odds are you didn't activate it. All two-step verification means is that there's a second step to logging into your Google account where you have to receive a, a verification code from Google either to your email or to your, to your primary mobile device that you then input into whatever you're trying to sign into so then Google knows that no one's trying to hack into your account using your login, that it is you trying to log in using your login. I already pulled up the page of the Android runtime as I mentioned earlier because this is how you're gonna be able to get the updated runtime if you need it. If you don't have any issues with it, you don't have to install this, so don't worry about it. But if you do have issues uninstalling an Android application, then this is for you. So, there's two links here on the article, so I'm just gonna pick this one, to download the Android runtime update. This URL would then link over to BlackBerry App World and it'll pull that up. I've already installed mine. As you can see, this thing is over 160 megabytes, just over 160 megabytes large. So if you have limited data, keep this in mind. Um, doesn't really say here when it was last updated, but according to the article, it was definitely updated as of February of 2016. So this, since it's installed, we don't have to worry about this anymore and we could proceed. How do you know if you need it? Well, another way to find out is go to your settings, go to about, and find out what version they, of the software you're running, which mine is right here. So I'm running version 10.3.2.2836. Now, I didn't sideload any of the newer models or latest software releases that were leaked out and turned into auto loaders. So this is the latest official update I got from BlackBerry and I installed that Android runtime just to make sure I don't have any issues. Now, if you do need to install it and for uh, an Android runtime update and you absolutely can't get the one from BlackBerry App World, there is a more technical approach on sideloading the bar files of the, ex of the good Android runtime and what is called a shell to input in two bar files that you'll need to sideload. And that's just a lot more technical. I'm not gonna get into that this time because first off, I don't need it. And I'm, I'm using Office computers, so I can't exactly just install uh, these applications to access these devices on these workstations. But we don't have to worry about that. I am gonna go to my device, downloads, here are the apps from Cobalt that I put onto my device already. So if you don't have an SD card, 
you're not gonna be able to read your storage on your phone to your computer by connecting it to a USB. It's not gonna happen for security reasons. So that's why I uploaded these to my Dropbox and because the file manager can natively read Dropbox, I just literally copied them over into my downloads folder and that's how I have easy access. So let's just go ahead and install these things. And depending on the length of time that these things take to process and install, because we have to allow app installations, I will allow apps from other sources to be installed, but I am not going to do the inspection part. I already know that they work, but most people are going to want to have this just to make sure they're not getting an, an infected APK. But if you're downloading through the Play Store, you don't have to worry about it. Either way, it's an extra step, and this kind of makes the lag time or the hang time to process um, the Android APK installation take a lot longer. So let's just go ahead and install, and depending on the speed of these installations, I might do some jump cuts so I can get to the end. Because in some cases, if you're running older Blackberries, uh, unfortunately, they're gonna take a lot longer than this to be able to process, just because the processor and the RAM. This thing has um, a Snapdragon 801, if I'm not mistaken, running three with three gigabytes of RAM, so that makes this thing fly a heck of a lot faster than the other Androids running on Snapdragon's 400s with one or two gigabytes of RAM. So, so far, so good. I got two apps just about done installing. I'm going to proceed to the next one, which was... Okay. Oh, that's the one I installed. Okay, good. So, this one. And the last one that I need right now, I'm not going to install the Play Games. You can. That's the patch version of Google Play Services for Games. And that's how you're able to log into your Google account to access the history of your games. Now, I have not had much success with it. I don't really use it much because I don't really game. So you're welcome to try that one out. So now I have my four apps, which I'm going to put into one folder so I can access them easily. Let's call this one Google. So what we're going to do is first get logged into our Google account. There it is. This is Android runtime. And if you have an existing Google account, go ahead and do it. If not, you can generate one here. Now I am going to log in to an existing one that I have off camera. So now I'm signing in and let's hope it does it. Okay. I'm going to uncheck that. And now that it's gone down, that means I should successfully have logged into my Google account. Now the next part I have to do is register my device. So right here it'll say registered on not available. So then I would hit register device after opening the Google ID one. It's gonna start checking in. Voila, registration complete. And now it's updated here. I have an Android ID and the date I was registered in, nearly midnight. All right. Now these are further settings that you can adjust of Android settings that you need. I don't have Google Fit work. Uh, I'm not using this. So maybe you can try it for yourself if you're into the whole fitness thing, because maybe you can access it from here. Okay. And that's how you access some of the settings. Now, moment of truth. Did we do it right? We're in. So this is the Google Play Store. And I already have an app installed on this. Apparently, it is an Android app. I didn't realize I had an Android app of this install because I just did a fresh install. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter this app and update it so you can see how it's supposed to work. So when you're updating or installing an app, there's a couple of steps in it, unfortunately. So the first step, obviously, is to download through Google Play Store. Then it's going to process it through the Android APK installer, which you then hit install. And then you're going to be hit with a per the permissions window. It's like cancel or allow. I hit accept 
and this should process just fine. And then I'm going to try opening this thing. Okay, so it looks like I'm in. I could sign in if I want to or not have to. And it looks like it's working. So this is Android runtime for BlackBerry 10 devices. And it works a lot better on something um, more modern and robust, which will probably be the best hardware you'll experience it on a BlackBerry Passport. Now, one thing to be said about the experience here, if you're not entirely familiar with this, because some of you aren't familiar, by dragging from the top down, you get some more options about hiding the bar. The bar would be hiding would be this one here. Because if you hide it, you can no longer go back because, well, not with that button there uh, for Android runtime navigation. But you can always swipe from this side to the left to go back. This is from the BlackBerry Playbook days from a long time ago. Technically, I had closed the app just now, so I just had to reopen it. So I'm not gonna sign in right now. And if I want it back, I'll just show the bar. But now let's go to the size. This is important when it comes to uh, some applications that are made for portrait mode. Now this BlackBerry Passport, as you can see, is a one by one ratio. So this makes it kind of tricky when using some apps that are made for portrait mode because you can't, sometimes you can't scroll down. So the only way to be able to navigate in a portrait mode where the options will be cut off by the screen is to turn it into this rectangle. Games mostly are the ones that express that issue. So it'll shrink it, unfortunately, like this. It looks a little awkward, but this would be one of the ways how uh, you'll be able to get to some settings that might be cut off by the screen because of its ratio. I've had had it happen, so this is how you get rid of that. Now I'm just going to go back to the original one. You can always zoom out as well and change that whim. There it is. And voila, that's some quick navigation on the Android settings. So I found out why Cobalt doesn't include the mobile network APK anymore. Because here on a BlackBerry Google ID, these three dots up here to the right has the Android settings button that takes you into those mobile network settings. I don't know why that didn't occur to me before. So the good news is we don't have to worry about that mobile network APK. It's already built in. That explains a lot. So way to go. No need for redundant apps. Well, that about does it for the Play Store 10 walkthrough. And I hope this one helps you guys out considerably.